Hey yes, I'm Gene Walters, a software engineer at AWS. Today I want to quickly go over getting started with multiplayer scripting. By the end of this talk, we'll have created a multiplayer minigame like the one you see here. Using the multiplayer gem in Script Canvas, we'll create a spherical network player which can be driven around the world and interact with rigid bodies, all while keeping the network in sync. Here are some prerequisites before building out this multiplayer demo. Today, I'll be working in the multiplayer sample project, which already has the multiplayer gem enabled. You'll want to make sure your project has the multiplayer gem enabled also. Second, uh, our gameplay logic will all be scripted. If you haven't already, you'll want to be somewhat familiar with visual scripting and O3DE's script canvas system. While we won't have to write any C++ code by hand, we will be using multiplayer auto components, which generates code for us, so we'll still need to compile. I've also pre-made an input binding file. Input bindings let you bind key and joystick events, such as a button being pressed or an axis being moved to a gameplay event. And last of all, we'll be using some physics components. If you aren't familiar with rigid bodies, colliders, or character controllers, you'll want to check out the physics gem. At this point, if you don't feel quite ready to dive in, I've included more information on the last slide of this talk in case you want to learn more about these topics. All right, let's start by creating a multiplayer auto component or player entity we use for creating, sending, and processing input across the network. I've created this auto component XML file called simple script player component dot auto component dot XML. Let's take a look. This is the name of our component, simple script player component, and I've set the namespace to multiplayer sample. This will be whatever namespace your project is in. Override component and override controller are both set to false in our case because we're only going to be scripting. And these overrides are only needed if you're going to extend functionality through code, C++. Um, we also have a component relation here in which we're going to require that any entity with our simple script player component attached to it is also going to need the network character component. This is really handy because the network character component has a helper method called try move with velocity, which is going to be very useful when it comes to scripting. And perhaps the most important piece of our multiplayer auto component are the network inputs. Network inputs allow our autonomous player to create input and send it across the network to our authoritative server. The multiplayer gem will ensure both the player and the server process the inputs in such a way that the network simulation stays in sync. For this demo, I want to control my player using WASD, so I think it makes sense to send input for moving forward, backwards, and left and right. I'll store these values as a float between negative one and one. We'll also set the expose to script attribute to true. This will allow us to create input and process input from script canvas. Now that we've created the simple script player auto component XML, go ahead and recompile the project and O3DE's autogen system will turn this XML into a gameplay component. I'll meet up with you afterwards in the editor. Okay, we've recompiled. Let's go ahead and create our player prefab using our new auto component. I'm going to create an entity, and if the compilation went well, we should see that the simple script player component is available. And here it is. Let's add it. Uh, okay, so right off the bat, we see that there's some required components. Uh, this is a network component, so the network binding component is a requirement. And because this component requires network input, uh, it's automatically going to suggest we add the local prediction player input component. And um, we also required the network character component because we wanted that uh, helper functionality for try move with velocity. Let's go ahead and add that. Okay, 
network character component has some requirements of its own. It needs a transform component. This makes sense, right? If if we're going to move, then we're going to need the network transform component. And because this is a character component, this is going to rely on the standard PhysX character controller. Next, let's make sure our player has a shape. So I'll add a mesh component and assign the default sphere. OK. That looks good. And now it's time for some scripting. So I'm going to add the uh, script canvas component. And I've already created a file called um, simple script player. We'll open that up in just a bit. Uh, but before that, we'll also need to add the input component. In order to save time with this demo, I've already created a simple script player input bindings. This will send our keyboard input events to the script. Let's save our player to a prefab. The multiplayer server will automatically spawn the player prefab anytime a new player connects. The default location is set to prefabs slash player dot prefab. You can save the network prefab to another location. Just remember to update the console variable SV underscore default player spawn asset, as this is where the server looks before spawning a new player. I've opened up script canvas and now we're in our simple script player graph. The input handler node will receive keyboard input. I'm storing these in variables called forward back and left right. If you search the node palette for the name of our new multiplayer component, you'll see that CodeGen automatically created script events. We'll be using a few of these. In order to keep the network simulation in sync, we can't move the player as soon as keyboard input is received. Instead, we'll wait for the multiplayer gem to send us the create input and process input event. The create input event is where we decide what inputs need to be sent over the network this frame, and it will only be called for autonomous players. I'll use our simple script player auto components create from values node and pass in the forward back and left right variables from earlier. This create input event expects as a result. So I'll pass in the newly created network input back into the create input node. After creating the outgoing network input, next we'll handle processing the incoming network input. The process input event allows us to take the input that's been given to us over the network and apply it to actually move the player. This event will only be triggered for the authoritative server and the autonomous player. We'll use the extract properties node to access our forward back and left right input, create a velocity vector, and then move using that velocity via the network characters try move with velocity event. Don't forget to save your graph, and at this point, if you launch a server in a game, you'll be able to see your player moving around. Nice! To make this demo a little more interesting, I've added some network rigid bodies to the level and set them up to change color whenever a player bumps into them. As far as interacting with the player is concerned, just remember to add the network rigid body component. And there you have it. You've scripted a multiplayer demo using auto components, network inputs, and pre-existing network physics components, all provided by O3DE's multiplayer gem. Thanks for watching. To find out more about multiplayer and script canvas, head over to o3de.org.